Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Gospel Minute Live. I'm Steve Toby, and today is November the 7th. And yes, I did sneak a look down in the corner of my computer there to make sure it was November 7th. And today is the feast day of St. Raphael. <clears throat> and at St. Michael's, St. Raphael is a very, very important saint. He founded our parish a little over 100 years ago. He would uh, travel the United States. He was a bishop in Brooklyn, but he would travel the United States establishing uh, Antiochian parishes. Now, he I, I don't know if he established Kurtz or not, but uh, he's uh, established several, several uh, Antiochian parishes here in the United States, and St. Michael's was one of them. So it's a very, very important saint and very important day for us. And uh, his... Troparia is Rejoice, O Father Raphael, adornment of the Holy Church. Thou art champion of the true faith, seeker of the lost, consolation of the oppressed, father to orphans and friend of the poor, peacemaker and good shepherd, joy of all the Orthodox, son of Antioch, boast of America. Intercede with Christ God for us and for all who honor thee. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, now it's time to go. Maybe, uh, maybe Kurt will answer that question for us. Um, did did uh, Raphael? Do you know establish your parish? No, uh, uh, Metropolitan Philip did. Oh, that's right. You were part of that. Yes, we're we're, we're uh, a bunch of the evangelicals uh, that came along into the Orthodox Church, and. Uh, Folks, that is, uh, 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 before we get to scriptures, um, there was a group of evangelicals um, uh, led by a guy named Gilquist, right? Well, there were 10 people that were all in that group, and Father Gilquist was one of them. Right. He wrote the book about their journey to orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. So, very good book. Wonderful book. 2,000 people joined on the same day. Uh, all over the country. A lot of chrismations there. Yeah. A lot. And then, uh, then over the next couple of weeks, uh, the leaders of the church churches were uh, made uh, deacons and then priests mm -hmm. and so forth over, the, over a couple of week period, as I understand it. Yeah. yeah. So if you want a, a really good, good book about orthodoxy, and these men were not uh, idiots. They were some of them were PhDs, so, and they were very, very intelligent men, and uh, well trained, and uh, they came over in mass to the uh, Orthodox Church, and uh, you know, it, it, um, Metropolitan Philip took them in. Uh, some of them had gone to Constantinople, hoping that the uh, Ecumenical patriarch would see them, and uh, they got turned down. Huh? Yeah, he didn't even give them an audience after they traveled over there. Yeah, but uh, no, it's it's a, a pretty amazing story, and uh, it's very inspiring. Uh, they spent ten years uh, studying as groups, and so one person would study, you know, the worship and dig into the liturgy and so forth. And when they were all done. They were convinced that the, uh, to find out that the uh, the church, the ancient church, was the Orthodox Church, and uh, they said, "Now, how do we join it?" Yeah, and you know, it's the Orthodox Church that we're doing our the history of the Orthodox Church is what we've been studying for the that tonight is part twenty, I think, of the Book of Acts, and that is the early history of the Orthodox Church. So. But do you remember the name of the book? I can't remember it. Not off the top of my head. Yeah. I'll I'm have to sure. look it up. I have a copy, or I may have sent a copy to Father Antipas. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. We can probably Google it and get, get the answer. Yeah. I'll, I'll message it a little later after we get done, okay? Okay. Great. Uh, so why don't, you, why don't you go on with our readings? All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Let us pray. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Illumine our hearts, O Master who lovest mankind, with the pure light of thy divine knowledge. Open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings. Implant also in us the fear of thy blessed commandments, that trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter a, upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well-pleasing unto thee. For thou art the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God. And unto thee we ascribe glory, together with thy Father who is from everlasting, and thine all-holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Tonight's psalm is number five. It's found on page 684 of your Orthodox Study Bibles. The notes for Psalm 5 uh, say that it is similar to Psalm 4, again, emphasizing the end. Christ is the end concerning the inheritance which the church and the world to come. For Christ and his inheritance are the end to which God's eternal purpose is moving. And his prayer to the Father, whom he calls Lord and King and God, he is teaching the church how to pray and worship in her morning prayers as she travels through the, this present lawless world. Thus, the church uses Psalm 5 as one of her fixed psalms in the first hour, and the clergy often pray verses 8 and 9 upon entering the church just prior to the services. Psalm number 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord, hear my cry. Give heed to the voice of my supplication, my King and my God. For to you I will pray, O Lord. In the morning you shall hear my voice. In the morning I will stand before you, and I will watch. For you are not a God who wills lawlessness, nor shall the evildoer dwell with you. The lawless shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all the workers of lawlessness. You shall destroy all who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the man of violence and deceit. But as for me, in the fullness of your mercy, I will come into your house. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me, for there is no truth in their mouth, and their heart is vain. Their throat is an open grave. They deal deceptively with their tongues. Judge them, O God, and let them fall by their false accusations. Cast them out in the multitude of their ungodliness, for they provoked you, O Lord. But let all who hope in you be glad. They will greatly rejoice forever, for you will dwell in them. And all who love your name will boast in you, for you will bless the righteous, O Lord, you crowned us with the shield of your goodwill. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And our epistle this evening is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 7, verses 26 through 28, and chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, found on pages, page 1662 of our Orthodox Study Bible. For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and then for the people's? For this he did once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the Son, who has been perfected forever. Now this is the main point of, of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gospel this evening is taken from the gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 9 through 16. It's found on page 1444 and 45 of your Orthodox Study Bible. Let us attend. 
I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go on and go, go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give, gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Catherine Houston has come to our rescue once again. Uh, she says the name of the book is Becoming Orthodox by Father Peter Gilquist. Thank you, Catherine. And you can go on YouTube and uh, do a YouTube search for Becoming Orthodox, and you will find um, a uh, presentation by Father Gilquist of that uh it pretty much sums up that book of their journey to orthodoxy. And uh, the the video quality is not good, but it's still there. And mm -hmm. I would recommend the book. It's very interesting and uh, it's a good read. Actually, it is. It's not a difficult read at all. Very easy. Easy book to read. Yep. And the, the video, I, I got a lot out of it as well when I watched it on YouTube. Yep. So. Okay. Okay. We'll see you later. Thank you. We'll see awesome. you on Monday. Monday. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye. Okay. Well, we have a bunch of people with us this evening, and uh, we're studying the history of the Orthodox Church, the early, early history of the Church, and that's found in the Book of Acts. So, uh, before we start that, I want to say hello to everybody, though. Joanne Milburn, uh, Joan Milburn. Why do I want to say Joanne? Joni Milburn, Bernie Grand. Good evening to you, Bernie. Good to see you with us. Jonathan Nichols, Catherine Houston, uh, Rob King, Vicki Winter, um, Violetta, good evening to you. And let me see, over here, Joyce Marie, good evening. Is it finally over or are we just starting? Ooh. Either way, continue prayers, especially for our first responders. Amen. We pray for them, Joycey. And Robert Ryan, God's peace to you all, and prayers ascending for all of our intentions. Amen. Joe Rivera, Sharon Toby, we have a skunk report this evening. Yes, one of those little critters came back to visit. God bless them. Yep. And Max is outside. We have warm, beautiful weather right now. And uh, so I think uh, Max is outside enjoying it. And let me see here. And Joyce, Joyce says, maybe the skunk likes to visit Max. Maybe. And Phil's, Phil Collins is at work, but he's listening in when he can. And Joe Barbera says, I have that book, Becoming Orthodox. It's a really nice book. It really is. And if I didn't think it wasn't a nice book, I wouldn't recommend it. But it's easy to read. And over here see, Robin Armstrong, Christina, good evening, beautiful family, Joanne Manaski. And uh, Christina sent us our uh, daily meditation, which I'll share with you in just a minute. Wilson Salviejo, Ruthie, Kid, uh, Ruthie Johnson, beautiful day in Kentucky, I hear. Father Andy Poss, good evening to you, beloved brothers and sisters, amen. Dragon, Dragon Mitchevich. Good evening, everyone. May God be with us. Please pray for Yella. She's positive for the COVID-19. And Lord, we pray for Yella. That uh, uh, her affliction from the coronavirus is a short one and a mild one. We pray for a quick recovery for Yella, dear Lord. Amen. Bring her to good health. 
And we have Kendra Bennett. Good evening, everyone, from the kids and myself. And Joseph Khalil. And he has our Bible verse for the evening, which we'll do right after we say hello to Anna Gennaro and Marsha, Marsha Kreese. So, Joseph Khalil. And he brings us our Bible verse for the evening. And it's from Isaiah chapter 54. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. For your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Amen. So don't fear, folks. Don't fear. Uh, for you will not be ashamed. You will be not led into shame. For your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, and he is called the God of the whole earth. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. And now, oh, Kurt Lytle joined us. Yep, well, he read it for us. And now we can do our evening meditation. And tonight it's uh, from uh, St. Silouan, the Athenite. And Christina Hunter forwarded to us. So it's on the illumination of God. And St. Silouan writes, Pride does not allow the soul to set out on the path of faith. Let's read that again. Pride does not allow the soul to set out on the path of faith. Here's my advice to the unbeliever. Let him say, Lord, if you exist, then illumine me, and I will serve you with all my heart and soul. And for this humble thought and readiness to serve God, the Lord will immediately illumine him. And then your soul will sense the Lord. She will sense that the Lord has forgiven her and loves her. And you will know this from experience and the grace of the Holy Spirit will be a witness in your soul of your salvation. And you will want to cry out to the whole world, the Lord loves us so much. The Lord loves us so much. Amen. St. Silouan, the Ath Athenite. Thank you, Christina, for bringing us that. Oh. And let me see. And Phil Collins has just one unspoken intention to add to my usual requests. Thank you so very much. Brandy, Brandy Collins and I love you all. Oh, we love you. And dear Lord, we, uh, we pray for Philip's uh, request, his unspoken request. We pray for his special intention, dear Lord. We ask that you grant it to him. Amen. Marianne Russell's here, and uh, good evening to you. Yeah, let's see if anybody else has joined us over here. Nope. Okay. So, we're in the book of Acts. This is part 20. And um, we have Paul in Ephesus. In fact, he's going to spend two years in Ephesus. We read about that last night. Very, very, very important uh, uh, place. Let me see. Do I have the map? What happened? Am I in the right place here? No, I'm not. Excuse me for just a minute.
all this time. And I'm receiving a phone call telling me there's no audio. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, now we have audio. Sorry about that. So I was, well, let's go on. Let's go on with our, we'll save the discussion for later. So we're in chapter 19 of the book of Acts, and we're starting at uh, verse number 11. So that's uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 11. Paul has been in, in uh, Ephesus. He will spend two years in Ephesus, two years there. So, um, now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his, from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So, um, you know, we, we do the same thing, much of the same thing in the uh, Orthodox Church today. The rel relics of saints... Um, have been known to bring about uh, healings in people. Not that those relics or these, or Saint Paul himself, did the healings. It was God working through him, working that miracle, that healing through Paul and through the relics that we have today in the church. So, then some of the itinerant, uh, itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. Of course, the exorcist is the one who drives out evil demons from people. Um, and maybe some of us have seen the movie The Exorcist. So, so the, and the Jewish people had exorcists. So, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul t preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, chief priest, who did so as well. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on him, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that place naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all, and they counted up the value of them. And it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I've been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy, who we know, and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. Paul really wanted to get to uh, Jerusalem for the Passover. He's going to miss it. So he's going to try and get there for the Pentecost. But he also mentions here, I want to go to Rome. I want to go to Rome. So we go on. Uh, and about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way. And the way is what we today call Christianity. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He made a lot of money from those little statues he made of Diana. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. They would make little idols and sell them to the people. Okay, and there would be a lot of people coming to Ephesus. As we just mentioned, or you missed it because there was no audio, uh, traders and, and uh, ship people, uh, people coming off ships and boarding ships. Um, Ephesus was a very, very busy, busy place. And they would pick up a souvenir and bring it with them. So these idol makers were making a, a good profit. They were making a good amount of money. So 
The men you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost Asia, this Paul, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. They're tell, Paul is telling everyone, these uh, idols that these uh, craftsmen are making are not gods. Don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. So, so not only in this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristarchus. Now they rushed into the theater. That's where Paul was teaching. He had rented this big uh, uh, building, this theater, to preach in, to teach. He had spent three months in the... Uh, synagogue but they threw him out so he rented his own hall and was preaching there and when paul wanted to go to the end to the people the disciples would not allow him then some of the officials of asia who were his friends sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theater some therefore cried one thing and some another for the assembly was confused and most of them did not know why they had come together and they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Now this Alexander was a Jew, and he was also a disciple of Peter, or Paul. Excuse me. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, since these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. For you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of your goddess. Therefore, if Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are pro -counsels. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you have any other inquiry to make, it shall be determined in the lawful assembly. For we are in danger of being called in question for today's uproar, there being no reason which we may give to account for this, this disorderly gathering. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. It seems wherever Paul goes, there's trouble. There's trouble. And uh, what's the one thing the Lord promised us, you and I? Actually, he promised two things, eternal life and persecution. We would be persecuted. And uh, we would be humiliated. He promised that to us. That That's our... Uh, that's our... Um, Outlook, that's our uh, reward here on earth. Persecution, humiliation, beatings, and even, even being killed. We, we gladly go through these persecutions because our true life is not here on earth. This is only a mirage. It'll pass. It's going to go away very quickly. And our true life and eternal life is with God and Jesus Christ. So when someone makes fun of you, when someone uh, calls you a, a holy roller or whatever, thank them. It's a compliment. Thank them very much with a smile and with gentleness and respect. Amen. Okay, so tomorrow we'll start in uh, verse, or chapter 20, verse 1. And hopefully we won't have any hiccups with our audio. Actually, tomorrow, no. No. Tomorrow is our Sunday edition, our Sunday edition of the uh, Gospel Minute Live, and we are going to have lots of questions tomorrow. But if you have a question, there's always room, always room for more. 
you have a question, a topic, or an issue you'd like to discuss, let us know. We are ready, willing, and able to tackle any questions. And if we can't answer it, well, we'll find out the answer. We'll find out the answer. So, Okay. So, it is time to turn to our evening prayers. So, let's go to our icon corner. And that's not what we want. Oh, goodness. And... Let's go to our icon corner now. There we go. Oh, lots of technical issues tonight. Okay, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. O heavenly King, O comforter, the spirit of truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Now that the day has come to a close, I thank thee, O Lord, and I ask that the evening with the night may be sinless. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now that the day is past, I glorify thee, O Master, and I ask that the evening with the night may be without offense. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Now that the day has run its course, I praise thee, O Holy One, and I ask that the evening with the night may be, may be undisturbed. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, if during this day I have sinned, whether in word or deed or thought, forgive me all, for thou art good and lovest mankind. Grant me peaceful and undisturbed sleep, and deliver me from all influence and temptation of the evil one. Raise me up again in proper time, that I may glorify thee, for thou art blessed with thine only begotten Son and thine all Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made of one essence with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe... And oh, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O Christ our God, who at all times and in every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, who art long-suffering, merciful, and compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, who calls all to salvation through the promise of blessings to come. O Lord, 
in this hour receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, deliver us from all tribulation, evil, and distress, encompass us with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by them we may attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. And this is where we put in our own prayer uh, intentions. And it so happens that I have an email that I have to read. Um, I printed it out. And let me see here. So, Joyce Marie asks to pray for Jolene, who has knee problems, dear Lord. And uh, she also asks to pray that Jolene comes closer to you. And she uh, asks us to pray for Jeremiah, um, who's now divorced from Jolene, dear Lord. We pray for her, him, and we pray for uh, Christopher and uh, for her grandson, Christopher. So we pray for Christopher, Jolene, and Jeremiah, dear Lord, we pray for them, keep them safe, keep them healthy, and heal Jolene's knees. We pray for that. And we pray for Angela, who was diagnosed with um, gallbladder cancer, and the more tests that are run, the more cancer they find. So we, dear, we pray, dear Lord, we pray that you heal her and uh, relieve her suffering. We pray for that. Amen. And I think that's it from here. So we leave. And now, Melita Green, dear Lord, we ask that you remember those who are praying for this evening. And Melita Green asks to pray for Miriam, her sister, who suffers from emotional problems, dear Lord. We pray for a healing for her. Carmen Elrod asks to pray for Slater Bushman, that he remains cancer-free, Lord. We pray for that. Uh, we pray for uh, Carmen's son and her, his young family, that they return to the faith and that they bring their children up in a godly, godly uh, manner. We pray for that. And we pray for Carmen's four small grandchildren. We pray for Curtis, Carmen's husband, who is in a great deal of pain, Lord. We pray that you heal him and relieve him of his pain. Robin Armstrong asks us to pray for Frances, who's home now. She has a surgery this past Monday. I think it was Monday. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, uh, she is, uh, receives a healing from you, from her cancer. And uh, we pray for that. And we pray that you relieve her suffering. And she has a quick recovery from the cancer. We pray, dear Lord, for Robin's mother and father, for their emotional and physical needs, dear Lord. And we pray for Malia, 15-year-old girl who suffers from a brain tumor. She'll be starting uh, chemotherapy, I think it's the 19th of this month. Camilla Raymond asks to pray for her. And Lord, we pray that uh, she remains uh, diligent and focused and receives divine guidance and insight from you as she works on her dissertation. We pray, that, dear Lord, that you... Um, that you continue to favor her and her teaching position at the university. We pray for Camilla's health and for the health of her children. We pray for Camilla's father and, his, and her stepmother. They have some health issues, dear Lord, and make, have to make some big decisions coming up. So we pray for healing for them, and we pray, dear Lord, that they, uh, you give them guidance in making their decisions. Oh, Anna asks to pray for Tyler, 12-year-old little boy who suffers from a brain tumor, Lord, and we pray for him, for healing for him. And we pray for Oana and her daughter Maria, that they find peace and understanding between themselves. Amen. Marlies Fralick asked to pray for Nancy, her mother, um, who had surgery. We prayed for recovery from the surgery for her. And uh, then she took a fall, dear Lord. And she's had to go to uh, a rehab, but she's feeling better now, dear Lord. There was a while where she was kind of out of it, but now... She's feeling much better, so we thank you for that, dear Lord. Amen. And we pray for the Fralick family that you protect them from the uh, coronavirus. Mother Elizabeth asked to pray for a family adopting three children from that area between uh, Russia and Ukraine. We pray for their success. 
We pray for Father Benjamin Henderson and his health. We, uh, he had the heart attack and surgery, Lord. We pray for recovery from him, for him. David Sauls asked to ask us to continue to pray for the health of his mother. Joseph Khalil asked to pray for his son Toby that he comes closer to you and uh, receives your guard, guidance. We pray for Luke and uh, Joseph's other son, dear Lord. We pray that you protect him from all infections. We pray for that. We pray for Annabelle and Gabriella. We pray for Joseph's mother, Odette. We pray for healing for her from cancer. We pray for Renea, Joseph's wife, who has health issues, dear Lord. We pray for her, a healing for her, and uh, relief from her suffering. Amen. And we pray for Joseph's entire family, and we pray for uh, the health of uh, Doug Fall. Jonathan Nichols asked to pray for him, for his health, and we thank you for that wonderful MRI report he got. Thank you, Lord. And uh, Meredith Beckley asked to pray for Katie, Jake, and Addie, and we pray for the whole Beckley family. And Brandy and Philip asked to pray for Tracy and George, and we pray for Brandy, dear Lord, who suffers from uh, uh, lupus, a very serious health condition, Lord. We pray for healing for her and relief from her suffering. We pray for uh, Philip. Um, we pray that you console him, comfort him, and uh, relieve him of his anxiety as he worries so much over Brandy's uh, health, dear Lord. And uh, once again, we'll mention Philip has a special intention that we are praying for. And uh, we pray, dear Lord, for, where am I? Oh, yes, we pray, dear Lord, for Brandy's brother, Kevin. We pray for Kevin, dear Lord, that he comes closer to you and makes better decisions in his life. We pray for Brandy and Kevin's father, who's recovering from a stroke. And we pray, to, we pray, dear Lord, for his recovery and thank you for the progress he has made. And we pray for Brandy's project to establish an Orthodox mission and her corner of Wyoming. Marianne Russell asked to pray for Kathy, for Violet, and for Louise. And uh, Colleen asked to pray for the health of Marie and her husband. And Phil Collins asked to pray for the health of Dee. Alione asked to pray for Joanne, for healing for Joanne, who suffers from cancer. We pray that Brandon finds work soon, and we pray for Lori, that she finds peace in her family. Katrina Bennett asked to pray for the health of Carola. Daniel Duran asked to pray for Gail. And Catherine Salcido asked to pray for little Izio, that he grows up with faith in you, dear Lord. We pray for that, and we have the same prayer for all of our children. Mother Elizabeth asked to pray for Larissa and the Klippa family. We pray for the health of John, for Father Theodorus, and for Heraclius Smith. And we pray for Mother Elizabeth's uh, ministry down there in Flagler County, Florida. And Philip asked to pray for the health of Rosie. Marianne Russell asked to pray for Barbara, Jeffrey, and Ann Hubiak. And Kathy Zances asked to pray for her daughter, Sophia, and her mother, Anastasia. We pray for their health. Debbie Owens asked to pray for her, that uh, she has less stress in her life, both at work, at work and at home. And we pray for her. We pray for the Owen family, especially Gio and Jordan, dear Lord. We pray for them, that they make better decisions in their life and they come closer to you. And we pray for Yelena, who suffers from a lot of pain, dear Lord. So we pray that you relieve her pain and relieve her uh, dependence on her pain medications. Amen. Millie asks us to pray for Andrew, her son, that he comes to you in faith, Lord. We pray for the family of Linda Paxos. We pray for Kat Zerga and her special intention. Joanne Manaski asks to pray for her daughter Erin and Erin's husband. We pray for their health, Lord. We pray for uh, Aaron, Joanne's brother Paul and for Corey, her son. And we pray for the health of Cruz. We pray for Stephanie Acario for her health and well-being, dear Lord. We pray for her. Uh, Paul Collins, we pray for Paul's health, dear Lord. He suffers from asthma and other health issues, dear Lord, as does Phil. We pray for both Paul and Phil to relieve their health uh, problems, dear Lord, and relieve their suffering. We pray for that. And we pray for Paul's special intention. 
We pray for the health of his children, and we pray for a supervisor at work who suffers from cancer. We pray for all of that for Paul, dear Lord. Amen. Catherine Salcedo asks to pray for all of those with addictions as she suffers from an addiction, Lord. So we pray for Catherine, we pray for her husband, and we pray for Bianca and Rodrigo. Catherine Houston asks us to pray for John, David, for her son, Brandon, and Brandon's wife, uh, Nicole. We pray for Catherine's daughter, Lexi, who has health issues, dear Lord, and has tested positive for the coronavirus. And we pray that her case of the virus is very mild and resolves itself quickly. We pray also for Nicholas, Tiffany, Gary, Rebecca, and Taylor, Catherine for health and relief from a rare eye condition and its symptoms, and for Sarah and her family. We thank you, dear Lord, for the uh, healing that you have given to Nadine. We uh, pray for Patricia, Catherine's sister. We pray for her health and relief from persistent back pain. We pray for healing for Michelle, who suffers from uh, breast cancer, a reoccurrence of breast cancer, Lord. And we pray for Donna, who has brain cancer, Lord. We pray for healing for her. I ask that we pray for the health of my family, especially my granddaughter, Sarah, my daughter, Maureen, and her, her family, that they're protected from the virus. We pray for that. We pray uh, for the health of my wife, Sharon, and their Lord. We uh, pray for Michaela Reyes, um, who's already had two surgeries for breast cancer, Lord, and she still needs a third. So we pray, dear Lord, that you uh, relieve her suffering and heal her of breast cancer. Lena May asked to pray for her husband. We pray for Lena May's health, dear Lord. She suffers from health issues, and we pray for healing and relief from suffering for her. And we pray for Lena May's special intention. Bernie Grant, who's with us this evening, it's so good to see you, Bernie. Well, Bernie asks to pray for his health, for his family, especially his mother. And we pray that Bernie gets back to work really soon, dear Lord. And when he does it, everything goes smoothly for him. Elder Millennial asks to pray for his family, especially his mother, Celeste, and his niece. And we pray for Elder Millennial that he is successful in his studies. Uh, Karen Karlanovich asks to pray for her children and grandchildren, especially Jana, her daughter, and Francis, her granddaughter. And we pray, dear Lord, for Karen, for her health. She's in a lot of pain and suffering, dear Lord. We ask that you relieve her of those, uh, of that pain and suffering. We ask you of that. And uh, Stefan Bennett asks to pray for all of our spiritual fathers worldwide, guiding their flocks during this trying time. And I pray for Father uh, uh, Gregory at St. Michael's, uh, our, my parish and uh, my priest. I ask that we pray for Father Wade Fonestock and his ministry down in Florida. And for his family, that they are protected from the coronavirus, and that Brandon uh, comes closer to you. We pray for that. We pray, dear Lord, for Father uh, Constantinos and his ministry. He's the director of the uh, St. Irene Orthodox Orphanage and uh, Mission in Kenya. We pray for Father Antipas and his ministry in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. We pray for that. We pray for Father Antipas's family, especially for Gloria, his daughter, who's in university. We pray for the uh, ministry of Father Emmanuel, also in Kenya, and he's at uh, St. Sophia's. We pray for Father Demetrios. Amen. And Stefan asks to pray for all of those who are sick, both physically and spiritually. Lord, we pray for them, especially those who are sick spiritually. And Stefan asks that we, you, dear Lord, have mercy on all of us sinners. Amen. Anna Gennaro asks to pray for the health of Catherine, for Joseph, her brother, that he's protected from the fires and his hearing improves. We uh, pray that Daniel, her son-in-law, comes to you in faith, dear Lord. We pray for that, and he brings his family with him. We pray for Anna's special intention, and we pray that Anna finds suitable and affordable housing in Washington State so she can move there and be with her uh, daughter and grandchildren. We pray for that. Joe Barbera asked to pray for uh, uh, Janice and Jean, his sister and brother-in-law, and for Bud and Loretta, his brother and sister-in-law. Stuart Jones asked to pray for his health and the health of his mother and brother. David Fox asks us to pray for the health of Daniel and his family and Damien and his wife. And Lord, we pray for uh, 
David's aunt, Aunt Sylvia. She has health issues, Lord. We pray that uh, you relieve her suffering and bring about a healing for her. And we pray for David as he recovers from his broken foot. Wilson Salviejo asks to pray for him, for his mother, Gregoria, for his brother, Donald, for his nephews, Ken and Kyer, for his sister-in-law, Rochelle, for his aunt, Rose, for his mother's caregiver, Stella. We pray that, dear Lord, that you protect them and keep them safe from all harm, sickness, and disease. And we pray for Mary Chu, who's passed away uh, just recently. Lord, we pray that Mary Chu has found eternal life. Rest in peace with you. Stefan Bennett asked to pray for his children, Christy, Kara, Justin, Kayla, and Warren. And we pray for uh, Kendra as well, dear Lord. That's uh, Stefan's wife. And we pray for Stefan, that you keep him safe in his travels. Amen. Stacy Bellis asked to pray for the health of Amy, for her husband Brian, for uh, their children, Yanni, Kiriakos, Anastasia, Yakovos, and Michaelis. And we pray for the health of Stacy's brother in law. Jay Russell asked to pray for Tim and Debbie Moses. And we thank you for the successful surgery for Debbie's eyes, on Debbie's eyes, dear Lord. We also pray for the health of Mia Wagner and Arabella Wagner Rawlings. We pray that Jackson, little Jackson, stays cancer free. And we pray for Elijah, dear Lord, little boy who suffers from cancer. We pray that you heal him and relieve his suffering. We pray for the health of Tom Gall, Lord. Uh, we pray for Jim Jackson, who has cancer. And we pray for Carl Johnson, also suffering from cancer. And his cancer has metastasized, dear Lord. So he's going to have to go through uh, chemotherapy. We pray that you heal him and relieve his suffering. We pray for the health of John Etcher. And we pray for Don, also suffering from cancer, Lord, colon cancer. We pray for her. We pray for Claire Routing, uh, who suffers from cancer as well. She's recovering from surgery and that will start chemotherapy sometime soon. And uh, we pray that you heal her, that you uh, relieve her suffering and anxiety. And we pray uh, for Father James Rosselli, who suffers from cancer, Lord. And he's in the hospital now with an infection and pneumonia. He's on oxygen. We pray, we pray for him, dear Lord, um, if possible, for a healing for him. And uh, we pray that you relieve his suffering. Elena Sheldahl asks to pray that she continues to trust in you, dear Lord. Alione asks to pray for her husband and children. Deborah asks to pray for her grandchildren and for Kristen, who suffers from thyroid cancer. And Deborah has a loved one who suffers from an addiction. We pray for that loved one, and we pray for Deborah. Katerina Pappas asks to pray for her husband, Thomas. Maria Kukadakis for her grandson. Alita Hagos for the health of Manal. We pray for Alita's children as well. Rob King asks to pray for his children and grandchildren that they come to you in faith. We pray for Dixie and Virginia, um, Rob's two sisters, and we pray that uh, you assist uh, Dixie and help her overcoming her addiction. And we pray for Greg, who lives in Sarasota, Florida. He has ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, Lord. We pray for a healing for him and a relief from his uh, suffering. We pray for the health of Michael and Kelly Hatton and for their daughter. We pray for the health of Art James. Laurie Miller asks to pray for Jessica, who suffers from kidney failure. Stravula Batskos asks to pray for the health of Marie, for her father Simeon, who suffers from cancer and an infection and a fall. We pray, dear Lord, that uh, you bring him back to good health. And we pray for Demetrios, who's uh, scheduled for major surgery coming up. So we pray for a successful surgery for him. Connie Devados has to pray for her children and grandchildren that they return to the Orthodox faith. We pray for the health of Evangelina, and we pray for healing for Jeff, Gigi, Kathy, and Jeannie. And Lord, we pray for a miracle healing for Annie. Connie also has to pray for the members of our armed forces and our first responders and for her special intention. Nella Cotvelli asks us to pray for Cotney. And we pray, dear Lord, for Cotney, but we also pray for Nellie, that you heal her eyes and restore her vision. For this we pray. We pray for Stelio, dear Lord, that you keep him safe and protected while at work. We pray that you relieve his worry and anxiety. We pray for his special intention. We pray for his brother, Peter, that uh, his business picks up and that he can provide a living for his uh, 
family. We pray for that. And we pray, dear Lord, uh, for Stelio's uh, friend and my friend Sultana and her whole family. We pray for them, dear Lord, that, for their health and well-being, and we pray, dear Lord, that they come to you in faith. Luana asked to pray for Ampanita and for James Grass, and we pray for Luana's mother who suffers from cancer. We pray for her, and we pray for uh, Luana's protection and safety, dear Lord. Uh, we pray for that, and we thank you for her job. Colleen asked to pray for the health of Clay, for Sheila and Stephanie, and for her special intention. David Sauls asked to pray for the Aid and El Assad families at Shaz and Zephrin. They're all in Lebanon and in Syria, Lord. We pray for their protection. We pray for the special intention of Father Antipas. We pray for the health of Dr. Nagala. We pray for the health of Maria Shalikova. We pray for Fatima Muhammad, that she stay strong in her faith and in a very uh, challenging environment, to say the least. She lives in Tehran, Iran. We pray for Christopher Bundros, Lord. Keep him safe and uh, keep him strong. And we pray for his family, Shirley, Christopher, Joseph, Matthew, and Faith. We pray for all of our families, Lord, that they stay strong in their faith in you. We pray for the health of John, Liza, John, Carrie, Gibran, Annabelle, and Gregory. And we pray for Mara, who suffers from cancer. Lord, we pray for healing for Mara. We pray for Michael, Michael, Gabrielle, Andrew, Joanna, Zoe, and Anthony. And we pray, dear Lord, that they come closer to the church and closer to you. And we pray that you protect Sony from the virus. We pray for Marsha, who suffers from cancer, Lord, and blood pressure problems. Well, we pray for healing for Marsha and relief from her suffering. We pray for her husband and her two daughters who've taken, who've have, who have taken care of her at home. We thank you for them. We pray for Marsha's son down in Arizona with his family. Kurt Lytle asked to pray for the health of Betty Baird and for his daughters, Kristen, Rachel, and Nicole, for their health and protection. We pray for Kurt for success in his new business venture. We pray for a success in that for him. We pray for Gail and her health. We pray for Jane and we pray for Father Benedict, for the monks of the Holy Cross Monastery, for Christina in Jakarta and her children, for Coach Josh Harris, and for Father Emmanuel in Kenya. We pray for his ministry. And we pray for uh, Nina, dear Lord, who uh, has tested positive for the coronavirus, and she lives at home with her uh, parents and brother. We pray that you protect them from the coronavirus, and we pray that Nina's case is a mild one, and resolves itself quickly. Amen. Albert Brassard asked to pray for his health. He suffers from an ulcer on his foot, dear Lord, and we pray that you heal that ulcer. We also pray for David, who suffers from pancreatic cancer, and for Sharon and Joshua, David's uh, wife and son. We pray for Mary, who suffers from dementia, and we pray for the health of Joseph. Robert Ryan asked to pray for healings for Kathy Sanders and Kathy Kovac, they both suffer from cancer, Lord. We pray for Bridget, who's terribly worried over her daughter's unhealthy lifestyle. We pray, dear Lord, that uh, she makes better decisions in her life based on your guidance. We pray uh, for Bridget, dear Lord, that you console her and comfort her and relieve her anxiety. Robert also asked to pray for those with thoughts of loneliness and anxiety. We pray for all of those suffering from depression especially for Robert, dear Lord. We pray for Bob Payne, who suffers from kidney failure and cancer, Lord. And uh, we pray that you give him a healing and relieve him of his uh, agony and, and suffering. And we pray for uh, Bob's wife, Penny, that you relieve her anxiety. We pray for Leo Fox, who's recovering from a stroke, Lord, and we thank you for the progress that he has made. Bessie Carnes asked to pray for Effie, her mother, as she recovers for, uh, and gets stronger from a heart problem, dear Lord. And we thank you for that, and we pray that uh, they can implant that defibrillator soon. Darlene Ann asked to pray for Jordan, for Felicia, and for Felicia's unborn son. We pray for him. Vicki Winter asked to pray for the health of her parents, Martha and Jimmy. We pray that you relieve Martha's pain, and we pray that she will not need that hip surgery. We pray for uh, 
Vicky's husband, Earl, and for his business. We pray for the health of Jane Robbins and Ann Hawkins, and we pray for Vicky as she recovers from a broken arm. We pray for Earl Winter, Vicky's husband. He asks us to pray also for Drew. Drew suffers from brain cancer, Lord, and we pray for healing for Drew. Stacy Iwano asks to pray for her sister, Bonita, and who suffers from an addiction. We pray for her. We pray for Stacy and Bonita's sister, Barbara, and her family. We pray for their mother, Kathleen, for her health and for the health of her Kathleen's husband, Dennis. Ruthie Johnson asks us to pray for her family, especially Katie, her daughter, and Katie's two small children. We pray for Ruthie's husband and her brother, Jim, for their health. We pray for uh, Michael, that Michael has an increase in faith and comes closer to you. We pray for Philip, that he's able to overcome his addictions. We pray for Tricia, Ruthie's uh, niece. We pray for Tricia and her family, Matthew and Kevin. Christina Hunter asks to pray for her parents, Tamara and Doranell. We pray for them, Lord. And uh, we pray especially for Christina's mother, who suffers from thyroid and gallbladder issues. We pray for her. And uh, Robert Edwards asks to pray for um, him as he recovers from a stroke. And we pray that you restore to him the use of his left hand and left arm. We pray for Alexander Mihalichenko and his brothers, Serge and Nicholas. And we pray for Noah, who's recovering from a broken leg. And Joseph Worth asks to pray for the health of Daniel. Now it's time to go around and see if there's any other prayer requests. Okay. And over here. And Ramona Antonesi, I pray that all our prayers are heard and we are all healed in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask our Mother Mary and all the saints to also ask our Lord to listen to our prayers. I love all of you and I pray for you all. Thank you, Ramona. And uh, Joyce Marie. Joyce Marie says, pray for President Trump and for President-elect Biden for our nation's healing. We pray for that, dear Lord. We pray for our leaders that they make the best decisions possible for all of us. Amen. And Ramona also asked to pray. Uh, pray so I don't have T-cell lymphoma or psoriatic erythra. Pray for health for my girls, Charlize and Grace, uh, which were born, they were born with uh, immunodeficiencies. Pray that uh, they, get to love, they get to love the Orthodox Church. Pray also for my husband and the rest of my family. Lord, we pray for all of these requests for uh, Ramona's family and for Ramona. We pray that she doesn't have that lymphoma or that uh, psoriatic aritha. Arita. Is that arthritis? I don't know. Well, we pray for her, dear Lord, for healing for her and keep her in good health. And we pray for the Charlize and Grace as well. And we have an update on Effie. Bessie Carno says, also update on my mom. That's Effie. We had to reschedule her appointment due to her having shingles. That's right. I forgot about that. Please keep Effie in your prayers to get healthy and heal at home. Continue prayers for her medication and for her health. Thank you. Well, we prayed for the other Lord, but we forgot the shingles part. So we pray that you relieve her of the symptoms of shingles. We pray for that, dear Lord. Amen. And Bessie also asked to pray for her cousin, Bobby, who is battling COVID in the hospital and on a ventilator. Please, Lord, heal Bobby. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Dear Lord, get him off of that ventilator. Get him home. Get him home, Lord. We pray for that. <laughs> and when we, lost, when we lost sound there for a few minutes... Uh, Joyce, Marie's, Joyce Marie says, oh, oh my, I thought it was me. Have been under my desk sorting wires. Oh, that must have been a sight. And I think we have all our prayers. Just one more look here. Okay, dear Lord, we ask that you remember all those that we have prayed for this evening. 
We ask that you extend your healing hands on all those who are suffering physically, spiritually, and emotionally. We ask you for your healing, your love, and your grace as we give you our love. We ask that the Most Holy Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, adds our prayers and intentions to her prayers when she prays. We pray that St. Raphael, uh, founder of St. Michael's Orthodox Church, my church, adds our prayers and intentions to his prayers when he prays to your Lord. Amen. O Holy Father, Heavenly Physician of our souls and bodies, who has sent your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to heal all our ailments and deliver us from death, visit and heal your servants, granting them release from pain and restoration to health and vigor, that they may give thanks unto you and bless your holy name, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Well, folks, I'll see you again tomorrow night with sound. And uh, we'll have the uh, Gospel Minute Live, a, Saturday, a Sunday night edition. So if you have any questions, topics, or issues you'd like to bring up, email me, and we'll bring them up. And let me put up our email address here. There it is. Gospel Minute Live at gmail.com. That's Gospel Minute Live at gmail.com. For any questions, comments, or issues, or topics you'd like to discuss tomorrow night. Of course, I'll be here again tomorrow morning for morning prayers at 8 a.m. So, until then, may God bless us all. And remember, two things. One, God loves you. And two, I love you. Now, have a great evening, God, folks. Have a great evening. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord.